So this morning, the headlines are they got swept. Dave Roberts' manager asleep at the wheel as Lance Lynn allows a record four home runs in the same inning. Hmm. Would Dave Roberts be a genius if he pulled him after three home runs? (laughs) Uh, The last two years, the Dodgers have 211 regular season wins and one playoff win. And they're not alone. Favorites are getting dominated in the postseason. It's not the manager, man. It's not the manager. A Major League Baseball regular season is a triathlon, endurance. The playoffs are a 100-yard sprint. Analytics used in the regular season are often cast aside in the playoffs because you have to win now. You see it in the NBA. 3-3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. Yes, those numbers work over the course of a long season. Then you get to the NBA playoffs. You need a stop and a bucket. Giannis is really valuable. Right? James Harden, not as valuable. Can't get stops. The Dodgers, due to age, a domestic assault, and injuries, don't have an ace. You're not a World Series team. That's not a World Series team. Add this, Mookie Betts, a remarkable player, and Freddie Freeman, who's been a tremendous Dodger in his brief stint here, they had one hit in 21 at-bats. So your two best hitters disappear You don't really have an ace, and that's Dave Roberts? That's not Dave Roberts. Analytics don't account for everything. And they're in the NBA and baseball, analytics over a long season work. They don't necessarily work in a two, three, four game setting. It's a sprint, not a triathlon. You lose your best four starters. Clayton Kershaw's in what year 16? Come on. Got to be realistic. Justin Verlander once talked about analytics. He says, I think our culture in Houston is something that's not necessarily tangible. For most of the analytic forward teams in baseball, something that makes this team so special is something that's not necessarily measurable. That's absolutely true. It's called culture and clutch. I'll get to Philly in a second. You see a lot with them. But baseball fans have to blame somebody and especially in Los Angeles. Your number two pitcher in this series for the Dodgers was pitching in double-A baseball last year. It's not a World Series team. Major League managers make, on average, about $1.7 to $1.8 million a year to manage 162 games. A college football coach makes double that to coach 12. Why? Because a manager has very little say with analytics. He has very little influence on the bottom line. So no true ace. Your two best players can't hit. That's not a Dave Roberts issue. It's your reality. That's what the Dodgers were as a postseason team. Nobody in the postseason without two great bats hitting and no ace is going to win a series. And in this 100-yard sprint, Diamondbacks were clearly better. They hand him the batting order. Analytics drives the sports. why they don't pay managers anything. The reality is... It's happening all over baseball. You can be built for the long road trip. We all know this as parents. Remember when you were parents and your kids are two, three, four, five, six years old. You get in the car, you're going to drive to, uh, you know, Mammoth in California. You're going to go skiing. Or you're going to go to a lake and you're in the car four or five hours. You prepare differently as a parent for a five-hour drive than you do taking your kid to school. All right? You, it's the long trip. It's the vacation. That's the reality of baseball. It is such an absurdly long season. You're built one way. Use analytics regularly. In the NBA playoffs, you need a bucket. Give me a mid-range jumper. Give me me Kevin Durant from 18. Just give me a bucket. Give me Jason Tatum. Drive to the basket. Give me a bucket. In baseball, get me an out. Get me a hit. It's a sprint. And the Dodgers didn't have their sprinters. All right, so uh, playoff games in Philadelphia, I got to tell you, I don't know what it is. I used to feel this way about old Yankee Stadium. Old Yankee Stadium just felt different. TV there just felt different, looked different. The ghosts. It's like the Yankees' seventh, eighth, ninth inning. It's like, oh, Yankees will figure out a way to win. It was intimidating. I mean, baseball stadiums are charming. Fenway, Wrigley, they're not intimidating. The old Yankee Stadium was intimidating. Like the Yankees came back so many times. Philadelphia feels like that. It's almost a football crowd. 
it just jumps off the TV. That game 6-1, kept watching. 7-1, kept watching. 7-2, kept watching. 10-2, didn't turn it off. And a big part of that is Bryce Harper. He's got a David Beckham quality. He's a guy's guy. He's cool. He's alpha. He's fun. A little power. I can't explain it. I've been watching the Netflix uh, Beckham documentary. Just love that guy. And Bryce Harper, like Beckham, icon, star, very early age. Uh, loved, hated, boo, bomb, great. I'm telling you, I'm in the interesting business. That dude is interesting. They are 8-0, the Phillies, when Bryce hits a bomb. He hit two yesterday in the playoffs. Uh, they just don't lose when he's hitting home runs. He hit a couple yesterday. And I've, I've heard for years on uh, Bryce Harper, there's a, play, a way to play the game. I just don't buy it. All the old timers bristle at that stuff. There's three people in baseball. When they're up, I can't turn it off. Aaron Judge, Bryce Harper, Shohei Otani. I cannot turn the television off. It's the same with golf. The purists will tell you about Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler. He is number one for 50 weeks last two years. Yeah, I know, but I like Brooks Kepka. Phil Mickelson, Tiger, Brooks Kepka, get me to a TV. I can't explain it. By the way, it's not like Scotty Scheffler is that much better than Brooks Kepka. In big tournaments sometimes, Kepka's the man. He plays great in big tournaments. Bryce Harbour gets me to a TV. He's just a dude's dude. He feeds off the crowd. He's got alpha. He's not worried about analytics. I don't even know if he's a good analytic player. He's a dude's dude. Big, strong, best show in baseball. And I don't know what it is, but in that stadium, the Braves, the best team in the regular season, look absolutely small and overwhelmed. There is a magic about old Yankee Stadium that new Yankee Stadium just doesn't have. And there is a magic about that place on television. I can't imagine playing there. And Bryce Harper talked about it after. I love this place. Flat out, I love this place. There's nothing like coming into the bank and playing in front of these fans. Blue collar mentality, tough, fighting every single day. I get chills, man. I, I, I get so fired up. I, 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 man, I love this place. Well, you can see it and they love him. So, the Phillies are making the Braves look small. The D-backs made the Dodgers look small. The great Orioles are toast. These wild card teams, these underdogs are having a great postseason. And don't worry about it. I'm hearing baseball people say, whoa, hey, wait. wild cards win all the time in the NFL. We had an upset in the NBA playoffs this year. Miami Heat got to the finals. Go check out what their seed was. It's good. We don't want favorites always winning. It's what's hurt college football the last 15 years. That it was always the SEC. It's always the favorites. Nobody can win on the road at Georgia or Alabama. This is great for baseball. It is great. Listen, the Braves are an unbelievable organization. But this series is interesting because the Braves suddenly look small and intimidated by the Phillies. It's, it, I, that was great TV yesterday, even though the game wasn't close. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.